that my remarks have to be brief. <laughs> I was at the wedding. <laughs> my, my wife says he has a tendency to run on. Anyway, before I tell you anything, I have to tell you that Andy and I are tennis buddies. And we have a special set of rules that we play by. They haven't been written down and they haven't been said, but I'll tell you what they are. I can hit the ball anywhere I want. She has to hit it on my racket. It's true. Okay. <laughs> 50 years. Hell, Andy, and myself, we fought the battle to come. Especially Helen. She has to get the lion's share of the credit to her. I can remember one brief thing, and I don't remember how old you were, but we went to a special cystic fibrosis meeting and the import of it was to be how to handle grief. That's not something that Helen or Andy or I could accept. We never grieved. We always pushed forward. Andrea has touched everybody in this room with her decency and her graciousness. She's one of my heroes. She's up there with Lou Derrick and Winston Churchill. I'm proud to say I'm a father. They're here. And she has CF too, and she's a lawyer, and she helps everybody with CF with disability issues, and she's just wonderful. So I, ju I just want to say I just flew in from Houston, Texas for this party. And, and that is because Andrea has been the brightest light in my life. Too. You hopefully indebted to her for the opportunity to, to actually, you know, <laughs> no, you work with people and you get somebody who so inspires you. It actually helps you share that with other people and keep going. You, you know, you know, it, it kind of makes up for the ones that you kind of want to strangle. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, it's an honor. It's an honor to be part of the healthcare team. It's an honor to be part of your life. It's really an honor to like share a journey with conscious people who are trying to benefit other people and bring joy and humor and compassion and a phenomenal amount of, of I would say, insight into the experience of life. Thanks. Thank you. No, that's what I was going to talk about. Um, so, what year was it? Uh, 2004. Oh my God. Okay. So, 2000, summer 2004. Um, one of my um, filmmaking partners and I taught a class, might have been the first one, I think, maybe the second oh, one, no. called Documentary Boot Camp. And um, it was a one week immersion, like 9 a.m. to 9 p.m., for about five days. And I, we did this for three years. The best thing out of the whole thing was Andrea became one of my nearest and dearest friends. But the other great thing um, I'll never forget was sort of. She was like, very humble, and she said, look, I got this thing I'm working on. It's called, was it called then, nobody should know? No. Would find this extraordinary woman who has been keeping her CF a secret in the Orthodox community, except being incredible, to sort of go above ground and reach out to all the other CF, people with CF who were Orthodox. And Andrea is a most amazing way, and showed her his inner sanctum where he learned. If this movie never gets finished, but it will. Yes. <laughs> but, even, but even if it didn't, the very process that every single one of them went through. Uh, I will not be able to remember what I was going to say. So. Welcome to 50. So here we go. Uh, I wanted to thank you all for making it here today. You traveled from all over Seattle, Michigan, 
Virginia. Oh, he left already. Okay. <laughs> I saw him in the hallway. From Houston. And uh, in New York, we say Houston. Just you know. Uh, New Jersey, and over there. And upstate, Jackie. And Brooklyn, across town, and even up the block. Hampton Bay. And Hampton Bay. <laughs> <laughs> um, I am overwhelmed. <laughs> When I look around and see everyone here from different eras and arenas of my life, I feel like George Costanza from Seinfeld. When he says, Jerry, my worlds are colliding. <laughs> but in this instance, in a good way. <laughs> Aside from my husband, Steve, my mom, dad, stepmom, brothers, cousins, my sister and brother-in-law, their kids, my niece, her husband, there are people here from college, work, the dog run, film class, Team Liberty, those who have CF, those with transplants. There are, some, there are also my healers from Blue Lotus, uh, massage people, caregivers, and, but you are all really my family. I consider you all my family. So, um, you've been reading this, it's just hard. <laughs> okay. This celebration is in thanks to all of you for being in my life. I am grateful to know all of you. You have all contributed in ways you may not be aware of, namely by just being there. As you know, I am celebrating what to most is a big milestone. For me, it was unimaginable. While I pride myself on being a positive person, I had doubts I would live this long and feel this well. Many of you didn't have doubts. And maybe I felt your energy and it gave me strength. Or maybe you were all in denial. <laughs> <laughs> Until recently, 50 was an unattainable goal for me. And I am thrilled to be here celebrating with everybody. Because truly, I would not still be around were it not for my family and my wonderful friends who have kept me going and laughing inspiring me in their love and support to keep pushing through the difficult times, and there have been difficult times. There are those of you who have known me prior to transplant, most likely worried about whether I would last one more month. For them, my transformation post-transplant is probably no less than a miracle. And for those who entered my life later, no less significant in their contributions, may not grasp how I could barely finish a sentence without coughing up a lung. How I looked gray most days and gasped for, e for air, even when wearing supplemental oxygen. It was difficult to push myself to do five to six hours of therapies daily. Inhalations, air rate clearance, without ever feeling any improvement, doing IV antibiotics constantly. How hard it was to, to walk on a treadmill every other day just to keep my lungs from worsening. My mom was a big part of getting me through this period. Thank you, just does not seem adequate. At those times, all of your calls and visits to me were so important. Even if we talked about other people's problems, it gave me a break for myself. As I worried that each call I contracted may be my last, my doctors had ominously warned that it could. It all changed on April 25, 2000. I received my bilateral lung transplant. And while there were some bumps in the road post-transplant, I feel like I knew what it was like to not have CF for the first time in my life. What it felt like to breathe deeply and not cough every few breaths. I know Allison and Joe back me up on this. <laughs> um, I try to remain mindful of how far I've come. I am so grateful to my donor family who really made my rebirth possible. While they lost someone dear to them, they gave me my second chance. I am sure all my transplanted friends feel the same way. I've been able to experience close to 15 more years of life, feeling better than my first 35 years on Earth. These past 15 years, I've been able to get married, travel, get my pup Ernie, <laughs> volunteer, appreciate being, and appreciate being alive. And I am now able to play tennis, as my dad pointed out, and Karen <laughs> mentioned, something that was impossible pre-transplant, but something I always wanted to do. It is now one of my passions, 
Another one of my passions is advocating for organ and tissue donation. As I have been so fortunate, many have not. There are over 120,000 people waiting on the transplant list for organs across the country. Many will die waiting for a life-saving organ. I'm inviting you all to take a donate life button or bracelet. I'm wearing the bracelet. <laughs> and, uh, and wear them proudly. When people ask about it, tell them that organ donation saves lives. Lives. Just ask anyone here touched by donation or used me as an example. While I would like to call you out all individually, we would be here all night and the cake would get stale. <laughs> I feel blessed to be here, but even more so to have you all in my life. Speaking of cake, let's